let's discuss the second topic. And the second topic is definitely the testy one that we kind of alluded to earlier in the video. So um, look, we just need to, of course, establish some very common sense things. Room system's bad. Okay, folks. And we and I think you and I are on the same page that what happened to Mr. George Floyd should not have happened. And yeah, I, I was just watching a, a new video popped up. It's so disturbing to watch. You know, you almost it's almost one of those things that you don't want to watch because you just know it's gonna keep you up at night. But yet if you don't watch it, you feel how how can you not I mean this is clearly uh, a very um you can almost say it's that was a, a historic moment because what's happening in our country right, right now is not going to be easily forgotten it won't yeah you're right it won't be and it really did force a lot of people myself included i don't know about you to really kind of look at some issues that we kind of been brushing off for a while and realize that yeah we do need to change some things we do need to reform and of course whenever something like this happens companies will usually start making statements about how they support whatever cause is going on right now and what they're going to contribute to and how they are going to contribute to the solution. Now, you could, of course, cynically say that they're doing that because they want their business, but, you know, whatever the reason, it's nice. It's a nice gesture. But Uber, of course, had one. And while I actually think their email was, for the most part, you know, from a PR perspective, pretty solid, they did mention one thing that actually sounded like it wasn't going to work in the long run when you really get down to it and might be problematic. And they have confirmed that they're doing it today. And that is that they are officially waiving delivery fees for restaurants owned by African-Americans until the end of 2020. And, you know, I read this in that email that they sent, and I remember saying something at the time that, look, I understand where this mentality is coming from. You want to, you know, give back to the community. You want to help, you know, solve the problems. You want to show that you're on their side, and that's admirable. But I wasn't sure if this was the way to do it. Because it's one thing to say we're going to make sure to hire more people of minorities. It's one thing to say we're going to give this much money to an organization. It's one thing to say we're going to look at our own policies and we're going to soul search and we're going to reform what we need to reform. But what they're doing here, essentially, is they are giving business benefits and prioritizing good deals based on the color of someone's skin, which definitely seems to go against what Martin Luther King Jr. wanted. So here's, here's what it says. Restaurants owned by African-Americans who have partnered with Uber Eats will have no charges for delivery until the end of 2020. The delivery service app announced the incentive amid calls to end institutional racism spurned by recent protests against the police officers who killed George Floyd, an African-American. In an email sent to its customers Thursday, June 11th, which this is a few days old, so you know we're a little late getting to this, sorry. Uber CEO uh, Dastardly Dara, I mean, I'm sorry, Dara Khosra Shahi, said that the company is waiving delivery fees for Black-owned restaurants who support the community. The app will also highlight a list of African-American restaurants in specific areas to tap more customers. And he wrote, you know, Uber stands in solidarity with the black community and with the peaceful protests against the injustice and racism that have plagued our nation for too long. My hope is that if each of us recommits to doing all we can to counter bigotry wherever we see it, the change will follow. Besides the fees being waived, Uber pledged $1 million to the Equal Justice Initiative and Center for Policing Equity. Khaz Rashahi also committed to hiring a more diverse staff. I don't have an issue with any of that. But again, it has been brought up that this particular um, show of gratitude or whatever you want to call it um, is problematic because this is specifically saying like, hey, 
if your skin is this color, we will give you a discount. And that's legally not how it's supposed to work. And that's also not how racism works. Racism, that actually sounds very racist in some sense. Like, hey, because you're this skin color, we're going to either do this against you or we're going to do it for you. Eliminating racism is like everyone is treat, treated equal. So that means it doesn't matter if your restaurant is owned by Asians or Latinos or white people or African-Americans or Colombians. You know, we charge the same everywhere. But here's another thing that's interesting about this waiving the delivery fees, because Uber actually doesn't e even get that into exactly what fees they're waiving. Is it just the delivery fee? Because if it is, that's like a 2 to $5 fee that's waived. It still gives the restaurant an advantage that people don't have to pay that 2 to $5. But is that it? Or are they also waiving the fees for all the other fees? Because, Mark, you and I know, I'm sure you've seen my video. I'm sure you've seen the screenshots. Uber Eats takes a lot more than the delivery fee. There's like the preparation fee. There's the app fee. There's the partnership fee. There's a lot of fees. And sometimes those fees can add up to 70% of the order and restaurants have been leaking those images which show that this is definitely an issue is uber going to waive all of those because if they're just going to waive that one little fee they're not doing that much to help and if they're going to waive all those fees though that is certainly not fair to everyone else so i know this is a touchy a touchy one but what are your thoughts there are a lot of different ways to look at this. Um, you know, first of all, you could say, well, what is their intention? Where is this coming from? Is this coming from a place in the heart or is this coming from a place in the marketing department? Are they doing this so they have fought for a press release or are they doing this because they feel sincere about it and it's making an impact? And a lot of people might say, well, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's bringing attention and it's making um, you know, it, it's it's focusing on an issue that is in the public mindset right now. There's just so many ways to look at it. I will tell you this. While you were talking, somebody might have seen me looking down. I wasn't ignoring you, but I was just looking. I said, wait a minute. I just got an uh, uh, email from Uber Eats because I order Uber Eats a lot. And I don't know if you can see what that says. Oh. Take $20 off your next two orders. Hmm. So Uber is always sending me deals like that because I I order with Uber Eats. I haven't done Uber Eats ordering a lot recently, but as most of you know, I travel extensively. And when I'm on the road, I order Uber Eats quite a bit. So I'm always getting these. So I kind of feel like this is part of the nature of their daily business anyways to give discounts. So in, in my mind, I feel like it's a little bit of a hollow gesture. On the other hand, you might say, so what? It's shining a spotlight on a good cause. But the thing that jumped to the forefront of my mind, how do they know what restaurants are African-American? I, I sure don't know. When I walk into a restaurant, unless I happen to know the owner personally, which you know you do if you live in a community, I don't really know what someone's background is, what their heritage is, what their nationality is. I don't know all that. Some cases it's evident. You know, you go into a Greek restaurant and there's a Greek family that runs it or an Italian restaurant, there's an Italian family that runs it and you kind of know them and their names up front and all that. But if I walk into McDonald's, I don't know who owns it. I don't know if it's African-American owned. If I walk into a Chili's and Applebee's, you know, the same thing. So what's going to happen now? Are, is, is Uber going to ask these restaurants to somehow register with them? I don't, I don't have the answer. I just think the whole thing is, it gets very convoluted. Now, someone on my channel asked, um, and, and I don't know if they thought I really had the answer. It was just a rhetorical question. They said, are they going to get themselves in trouble for discrimination? by discriminating against all these other businesses. Well, what about, you know, the, the Latino-owned restaurant? What about the Asian-owned restaurant? You know, uh, what about it? I don't have the answer to that. Um, I would guess it's at people's discretion to run their business how they want. Um, but it's pretty evident when you're doing that based on 
race or religion, you are maybe asking for trouble. So I don't have the answer, but those are the questions that come up. Now, as far as the, um, you know, where, the, where this is coming from, I don't have a real issue with it. If you want to, you know, as I said, shine a spotlight on something that's happening, some societal issues, um, I can see the point. With Uber, I'm just not completely convinced that's where they come from. Yeah. So now, th th that's my take on it. I see that we're getting a lot of comments on this one. We are Unfortunately, I was I was babbling and I didn't have a chance to read all of them. That, oh, that that's fine. We'll 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 address a lot of these comments near the end. I will say one of the things when it comes to discrimination, I guess it kind of depends how they do it. Like, there's one way I can think of that they can do it that might not get them in trouble, and that is if they are still charging charging the um, delivery fee, but their Uber's paying it out of their own pocket, so it's not coming from the restaurant. But that's still a slippery slope, slope though, because, because basically their argument would be like, well, look, here's the thing. We're still charging the customer the delivery fee, but we're paying for that out of out of pocket. So competition wise from, you know, the customer side, there's no difference, you know, yeah. they're, they're still going to pay, they're still going to pay it, but we're, we're not going to take that. We're going to give that to you now. But that, again, that still creates another problem though. Like, but then there's, these restaurants are still getting a boost. Okay. Like, now let me ask you this though. Who is going to step up and take them to court and say, you illegally gave an African American owned restaurant a break. I mean, no one's going to do that. They they would look like the pardon my language. They would look like the biggest douche in in the media to say, "Oh, look what they're doing. They're cutting a break to African American restaurants. I'm suing them." Nobody's going to do that. So they can pretty much do this with immunity. Well, um, they probably we, wouldn't do this yeah. now. But this is going to be until the end of 2020, and memories, unfortunately, are very short. So, you know, you give it a month or two, and I, I mean, I, you know what this kind of reminds me of? This kind of reminds me of, and it's a different business, of course, but it kind of reminds me of what the Alamo Draft House did with Wonder Woman a few years ago. And, and it this was to be, it wasn't supposed to be a big deal. Deal. I think it was supposed to be all fun, but they had a night where it's like, hey, we're going to have a girls' night out at the one for Wonder Woman. And so there's going to be nothing but female workers. Girls come along, leave the husbands and the dates at home. It's going to be a girls' night out. I think it was supposed to be fun, but it quickly delved into this huge controversy like, well, wait, if that's if I'm a man and that's the time I want to go see the movie. Are you going to refuse my service because I'm a man? And one guy actually did sue them, I believe, and it settled. And basically, even though it was still a girls' night out, there were still men there because you know you can't actually say no. So I I never underestimate people's ability to sue for this stuff. Yeah, I, you know, I don't. I agree with you on one hand that the public has a short memory. Um, I don't think anyone's going to forget, nor should they, what happened to George Floyd. So I, I don't think this is going to. We, I know what, what you're. I know what you're saying, but I, I just think that this one is going to. It's got a shield of immunity built into it, and um, you know, I. I just feel that this is personally. I it does. I don't care one way or the other because, um, you know, like I said, I would. They would find some way to give me a discount, whether they said it was that or they said it's this. You know, you know, give 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 them their day. Their at at the very least, someone's getting a million dollars. Um, and Uber might look like uh, you know a bunch of opportunist acts, but. In the big picture, this is in my book. This is this is an empty page. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, Gig Life had a fun comment where 
Uh, she said, it's a good idea in theory, but you can't ask all your employees their race. Um, which, you know, I guess that's the other interesting topic. Like, you know, long term, how does Uber look when they're contacting these restaurants and saying, so what's the race of you that of the owner of the store? It's like, how is that going to look just in general? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Sorry, I couldn't quite hear you. Could you please repeat what you said? Really? <laughs> what was that? That was my phone, by the way. I have now reprogrammed my Siri so it speaks with a gentleman's British voice. So I feel like I have a gentleman's gentleman. Oh. Remember when, when Giles French, and you wouldn't remember that, who Giles French even is. No. But he, there used to be a TV show uh, called Family Affair, and Giles French was the British gentleman's gentleman. Oh, <laughs> well, that's interesting. Well, well, anyway, that's definitely getting off topic. But anyway, so folks, I know what you asked. Of, <laughs> well, I was just curious. Like, you know, I I don't have the Siri device. Well, my wife likes Alexa, but I. I unplug it whenever I get a chance. So <laughs> anyway, anyway, folks, I know this was like a interesting one. I am curious what you think about any of this. Do you think Uber's got that shield of immunity? Do you think this is like a noble thing they're doing? Or do you think this has problem written all over it? But do you think anyone's going to actually want to do something about it, considering the current climate we're at right now? We would love to know. So comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe, and as always, flame responsibly.